Hey guys, Janae here, filling in for Bridget. Um, it took me a while to finally figure out what I was going to do for a how-to video because I I feel like I'm not that expertise on much or actually anything. <laughs> but something I did realize that I am a pretty good expert at is diabetes. I am a type 1 diabetic. I have mentioned that in my intro video because that's how I got introduced to Harry Potter. So you just met someone and you want to be their best friend forever or you want to date them or you just want to be in their lives in general and you found out also they're a diabetic. Here's some helpful hints on how to interact with them. Some do's and some do nots. First things first, do not ask them if they have the good or the bad kind of diabetes. Not okay. <laughs> Both kinds are bad. No one is worse than the other. It they're both bad. Ask them if they have type 1 or type 2. Or, you know, some diabetes we respond to type A or type B. If someone comes up to me and says, hey, do you have type A or type B? I kind of understand what they mean. Do you take the time to know what to do in an emergency? Now, I'm not saying that you have to go to medical school and figure out every single nook and cranny that has to do with diabetes, but you know what? If you want to be in their lives, if you want to be a friend, if you want to be, if you're their, even their roommate, you know? There are some things that you need to know to make sure that you know they're okay. You understand every single diabetic is different. When my blood sugar is too low, I get really hungry and really, really shaky. But then my best friend Becca, when her blood sugar is low, she gets all sweaty and she gets really cranky. So understand that each diabetic is different. To go along with that, do not ask them about their blood sugar if you see that they're being unusually cranky ladies is the equivalent of asking us if we're on if, of a guy or anyone actually asking us if we're on our period when we're really sad or really upset we just want to be treated like actual humans who have emotions that don't have to do with our diabetes listen to their camp stories if your diabetic has been to camp listen to those stories because they are the equivalent of leaky con do not bring up stories about your friends grandpa's uncle's nephew's great-grandfather who died, had his foot, arm, eyeballs cut off from diabetes. It's not okay. Conversation just like stops awkwardly after that. Oh, I had a, I had a friend whose grandpa, man, just died from diabetes. It was so sudden he just died from diabetes. All right. That's literally how it will go. Ask questions. This seems really obvious, but a lot of people don't do it because they're afraid of being offensive or stuff. Trust me. You'll be less offensive if you ask a question. Do not ask us if we can eat that. I swear, I'm speaking for the entire type 1 diabetic population. It pisses us off. Don't do it. Interact with your diabetic, you know? Ask if you could test your blood sugar. I mean, I think it's really cool. My friends are like, oh, can I test? Because I feel like they're really... In don't mention Paula Dean. Just don't. So that's all I can really think of. Well, yeah, it's really all I can think of of ways to treat and love your diabetic because, you know, diabetics want love too, even though our pancreases are dead. We just need affection. Um, I hope you found this informative. And this is Janae signing out. Okay, and also because I'm taking over for Bridget and she's a champion, I get to reenact my favorite scene from Glee. My favorite episode is the Michael episode. Therefore, my favorite scene comes from the Michael episode. And it's the scene where Sebastian and Santana do that whole smooth criminal, like, thing going on. And there's just, like, so much sexual tension in the air, even though I know they're not into each other. And I know they did as gay, but I don't care because there was a moment in there where I thought they were going to kiss. And I shipped it for, like, five seconds. And then I stopped shipping it. So here's my reenactment. Excuse the crappiness of the reenactment. I just love this scene. So Santa walks in in her heels and she looked all sassy with her fedora and her pop face body thing happening. And she's like, hey, Andrew McCarthy. She's talking to all the warblers. She's like, don't know if you heard, but Blaine may lose an eye. You know, the same Blaine who was just besties with most of you, like not four months ago. And then Trent goes, what? Are you serious? Is he going to be okay? And Santana's like, sure, if he doesn't care about singing three dimension. And then Sebastian, the douchebag's like, Trent, I got this, bro. Bummer about Blaine. He was pretty. He shouldn't have gotten the way. It's so she was meant for Kurt. And then Santana's like, you may look like the villain out of an 86. 
uh, movie, but you should know that I'm fully prepared to go all Danny the Russo on your ass. And the minute that you put something in the slushy, and she's like, what was it, glass, asshole? And he's like, being a smart ass, he's like, red dad number six. And she's like, you a liar. And he's like, you question my honor. I demand satisfaction. And not that kind of satisfaction, because that's when I started to ship it. So I demand satisfaction, warbler style. And she's like, you want a duel? Cello guys, stay your asses back. But she didn't really say that. But this is the uh, the bridge version, so she actually did say that. She's like, cello guys, chill out a minute. I'm going to need you. And he gets the back. She's like, guys, go away. I don't want you to see me make a girl cry. And Santana's like, let's keep this on point. Basically, she's like, Nero, please, chill out. So then it's all the empty chairs and it's the cellos and it's all the sexual tension because... Here comes Smooth Criminal. Also, that's the moment I decided I'm going to marry a cello player. Because, Jesus Christ, they're so attractive. Okay. Then it ends and they look at each other and they're breathing heavy. And I'm like, no, kiss. But they didn't. So Zantana's like, I was better. He's like, what am? And she's like, tell me what you're buying that slushy, you douchebag. And he's like, rock salt. But that's okay. She's like, why the hell is that okay? I just told you. Blaine had had surgery. He's like, because I didn't put rock salt on this one. And there was slushy all over her face. And that was my reenactment of that awesome scene. So, 